Hello students, let us start with the basics of unit number 1. First we will be learning about what is software, difference between software and hardware and how software is important in the software engineering field. So talking about software, in software engineering field software basically serves as dual role. So software serves as a product and software serves as a vehicle to deliver that product. So what do we mean by software serving as a product? That means your software is helping the hardware to solve a particular task. Hardware is just a physical unit. Without the help of the software, it cannot solve anything. So software is helping the hardware to solve a particular task inside the computer. Similarly, your software is converting the data into the information also. That means it is taking the input from the users, processing it and giving the output. So software serving as a product is nothing but helping the hardware to solve a task and converting your data into the information. Now what do you mean by software serving as a vehicle to deliver the product? Software sometimes not only helping the hardware, it also helps other softwares also to solve their task. Like for example, you take an operating system. Operating system itself is a software. It allows other softwares to install over it and it also helps the so softwares to perform the task. So software as a vehicle to deliver the product is nothing but helping the other programs or the other softwares to solve their problems. So this is the dual role of the software inside the software engineering field. Now let us understand why software engineering is very important to us. Software engineering is basically important to us because of three reasons. The first reason is called as imposes discipline to work that can become quite chaotic. So generally if you want to develop any particular software, it involves large amount of steps. If we are not following a proper procedure, it will be very clumsy and very difficult to us. So by following software engineering, you can smoothly deliver any product to the customer. The second uh, important point why software engineering is important to us is ensures high quality of the software. Now, your software engineering makes sure that whatever features and functionalities are there in our software, they are working properly. Like for example, you have developed a registration page. Let me assume that I have missed a few fields in my registration page and I have clicked register button. So what do I expect from that? I expect that you will get an error pop-up message saying that you have missed a so and so field. Okay? So if that error message is popped up once I click on the register page, that means the functionality of the page is working properly. So your software engineering makes sure that these particular functionalities and features of your product are working very good. Okay? Once the functionalities and features are working properly, that means you are able to deliver a good quality product to your customer. The third point why software engineering is important to us is it enables us to build complex systems in a timely manner. That means let us assume that I have a very big task. Okay? That particular task must be divided into n number of small parts and I have to give a time period. Let me take an example of uh, construction of a building. So in building, uh, you have certain time limits for everything. So first you will get the pillars, after that you will get the slab. After slab, few days watering will happen. After watering, then the construction of the walls, then the window. So there's a proper planning that goes. Okay? After that, you get a beautiful building as the output to the customer. The same thing happens in your software engineering also. So if you are able to go in this proper order, giving certain milestones and all, you will be able to deliver any complex product in your market and you will be able to deliver it to the customer also in the given time period. So that is the reason why software is engineering is important. So, so to summarize these three points, software engineering is important to us because it keeps things organized, it makes sure that software works well and it helps finish big projects on time. These are the three reasons why software engineering is very important to us. So now that we understood these points, let us understand what is the basic difference between software and hardware. So software and hardware. Software is a logical unit. That means you cannot touch it. F hardware is a physical unit. That means you can touch it. Okay? No spare parts for your software. You don't have any spare parts, whereas you have spare parts for your hardware. Problem statement may not be complete and clear initially. Let me assume that I have gone to a company to develop a website for my gross grocery site. Okay, so I asked the company that I want a website for my groceries and the background should be blue color. After a few days, the company has come up with a prototype, a blueprint saying this is how your website is going to be like. 
Now, when I when I've looked at the uh, prototype, I felt that the blue color is not matching. So I'm I can tell the company at that moment that I don't want blue, I want pink color. So in your software development, in the initial stage itself, you might not have, I mean, you need not have a clear picture as to what you want to develop. Whereas coming on to the hardware, the problem st statement should be very clearly given at the time of manufacturing only. Let, let us assume that you have gone to a factory where you have where you have given an order of 10 buckets okay so the shape of the bucket the color of the bucket is already fixed you have machines which will mold the plastic it will heat it it will color it and it will give give you let's assume that after one bucket is being manufactured you wanted to change the shape and color is it possible no so in your hardware development the problem statement should be very clear in the beginning stages only that makes the next point where in software the requirements may change with time whereas in hardware the requirements are fixed before manufacturing only okay the next point you have is in software you can have multiple copies which will cost you very less whereas in hardware you can have multiple copies but they are costlier when compared to your software now the last difference between software and hardware is the failure rate though it is a software or a hardware both of them will fail at a certain period of time now what will be the lifetime of your software and hardware is decided with the help of a graph which is called as the failure graph and the failure graph for your software is called as the idealized and the actual graph and the failure graph for your hardware is called as the bathtub graph let's understand both these graphs okay this is the bathtub graph and this is the idealized graph let's understand what are these two graphs talking about the first one which is called as the bathtub graph so this is the bathtub graph as you can see the shape of the graph is in the form of the bathtub. That is the reason you have the name which is called as the bathtub graph. And this graph is divided into three stages. This is the first stage. This is divided into three stages as you can see here. Now this is the first stage. And then you have the second stage. And then you have the third stage here. Okay, let's talk about the first stage. The first stage is called as the decreasing failure rate curve or it is also called as the infant mortality. Let us assume that you have purchased a laptop. Okay, when you have purchased a laptop in initial stage, there might be a chance that you will be having certain charging issues or the battery issues. That is because of the manufacturing defect. So many of the hardware products in initial stages will be having manufacture issues because of which they fail frequently. And this stage where the hardware uh, devices are failing due to the manufacturing defects at the initial stage is called as the infant mortality. So in this, since you will be having a guarantee period, there are two cases that you can do. One is returning the product or replacing the product. Okay. After that, uh, say suppose you have got a new product in return then for few years your particular uh, laptop will be working very good which is called as the useful life it is also called as the constant failure rate in this phase you will not have any number of failures you will have very very limited number of failures now moving on to the next one which is called as the wear out as days goes on as years goes on hardware devices starts failing. You can see that suddenly your battery will be draining or you'll be having flickering in your screen and all. That is called as wear out. That means your hardware is getting older and older. That stage is called as the wear out stage. So in your bathtub curve, you will basically have three stages. One is infant mortality, constant rate, as well as the wear out. Both these will tell us what is the lifespan of your particular hardware device. Now let us look at the lifespan of our software which is determined by the next graph which is called as the idealized graph as you can see on the screen here okay so generally whenever any developer will develop any particular software he will load that particular software into the play store and he will assume that since the software is given at the initial stage okay since the software is given at the initial stage the, it might be having some compatibility issues or you know system issues and all so he will assume that every software that is released into the market will be having a failure rate in the beginning level and after those bugs are being resolved he will assume that the software will not at all have any errors but in real time 
this is not at all possible because depending upon the technology changes, there will be change in your software. So, they will be rectifying bugs, they will be introducing new features and all which will lead into the spikes here. These are called as spikes. Spikes are nothing but the updates that you get in your play stores. Let us take an example of an Instagram. Every time you get a new update, there will be some issue or the some problem inside that particular software. That is nothing but the spikes. So, every time a new update comes, there will be a new bug which will be rectified by the developer and a new version will be released into the market. So, as they keep on resolving these bugs and releasing all the updates, the, act, the rate is now the graph that you can see here is different from the idealized graph. Idealized graph is the graph that the developers thought at the beginning and the actual graph is the graph that moves on as the software is getting updated day by day. Okay? So, this is basically the failure rate for your software which keeps on changing depending upon the spikes inside it. Okay? Thank you.